What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're gonna make these useless rear reflectors go from this to this. So stay tuned. All right guys, so I hit up my good old go-to spot, eBay, and I picked up some sequential replacements to replace those pesky reflectors on the back of the car that don't do anything right now. These come in three different styles, the clear, the gloss red, which I have, and the smoked. And depending on where you buy them from, you will either have the little clips to slide into the back of the factory plug, or you'll have the pigtail adapter that must be cut off before routing the wires into the car, because the plugs don't fit through the factory bumper openings. One thing that is well known about these reflectors, no matter where you purchase them from, is the fact that this side is always going to be larger than the factory, and doesn't necessarily fit in the bumper opening as is. I have an idea of how to fix that, depending on how much needs to come off, and I will show you that later in the video. So with that said, the link for these will be in the description, and we're going to go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing I had to do was remove all of this out of the trunk so I could access where I need to go. Um, if anybody who's seen my stereo install and my flooring install videos, they know how easy that is to do. Once all of this is out, you're left with something like this. Now, first thing that needs to happen is this plastic shroud needs to come out of the car. And to do so, there are two clips that need to be removed here and here and here and here, totaling four. To get them out, it's pretty easy. Screwdriver into the back, pop it, center comes out, clip comes off. Once those are out, this panel's held in by four pins here, 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 and here by grasping at the bottom and giving it an upward tug on each side. That slides out, all four pins intact. And we're just gonna push that off to the back and we'll, and we'll come back to it later. Now once that's out, there's really not too much you need to worry about taking pins out on this side or on the other side for that matter. The only thing we need to worry about getting to is right here, this first plug that is wrapped in the uh, foam, that is the plug that goes to your tail light. And this is the clip that is going to be used to piggyback the signal off the back side. We're using those little clips to get the rear sequential light to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug these. So that way I'll be able to test the circuits on these lights to see which ones to power and so on and so forth. The reflectors themselves can actually be accessed from under the car, and to do so, you simply need to lay down and look up. In the center of the reflector housing, you'll find a 10 millimeter screw that needs to be removed. Once that screw is out, you can then press on the little white clips on the left and right side of the reflector housing, push them inward toward each other, and then press outward, and the reflector will come right out of the housing. So I'm going to go ahead and take those reflectors out, and we'll continue from there. So as you can see, when comparing the original reflector with the sequential, um, and lining those up the way they're supposed to be, the actual clips on the housing is set up in the same manner that it is now as it is on the original. However, that extra quarter inch right there of the housing is, I believe, one of the major issues that causes these to not fit the way that they did originally. Uh, you'll also notice that overall diameter and size of the lights are pretty similar running along this end here, but as they get further and further away from that, this side starts to become much, much greater in diameter than the original. So I'm thinking I'm going to trim some of this excess off here to get it to be the same size as this one, and I'll explain why when I show you what it looks like on the car. So here is the passenger side one already put in the car. It's just temporarily there, it's not bolted down or anything. On this side, it's all the way down as far as it'll go into the seam, which is nice. But as it moves outward, you see the space or the gaps in between the top and the body starts to decrease significantly to a point so which it is actually pushing against the body of the car on the top and bottom and corner of the bumper. Now I have a feeling that if I were to trim some of that out, this would slide in a little bit further and would help close up that little tiny gap that is sitting right there on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out on both lights and then we'll come into the actual install. All right, pass 
passive side is in, it's bolted down. Uh, you see the wiring hanging down here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I ran that on the driver's side. Uh, everything's trimmed, it fits in the port and it did go in enough to where I could get this clip on the inside to actually lock in place. But that housing is just a little bit thicker than it could be. Uh, the only way to fix that would be to melt the two lenses in the backing apart, cut some of the lens off and then try to reconnect the pieces together. But that's another project for probably another day. For now, it's in. It's only about an eighth of an inch outside of the uh, original proportion of the reflector. So I'll call it good. So in order to get the wiring behind the bumper, I basically just ran it through this open port right here where this first clip hooks to. I've already sanded this side down as well. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and clip that in place. Inside clip first, and then outside clip second. And right there, go ahead and run the uh, screw through the inside and the center. And then we'll go about getting the wiring from under the car to in the trunk. All right, so before I cover the wiring, one thing I did like to note that when you go to put the screws into these new sequentials, um, the hole needs threaded first. So before you actually put the sequential in and click it in place, thread the screw in all the way in to thread the actual hole, then install it so that way the screw goes in a lot easier. Uh, you have very limited space back there, so that will help. Now, as you can see, I already have the wiring ran into the car on the driver's side. In order to do that, what I had to do was I took this panel off. Essentially, first thing you wanna do so you don't break the clips is to take a little small flathead screwdriver into the top here and pry, which will pop this pin loose. Work your way down around the edge of the front here, popping all these little pins out. At the bottom, you'll do the same thing. And what it does is it frees that pin there. Once all those little side pins are loose, you just grab it and pull straight outward. And these two clips here pop out of there and there. So that way you can get this off without breaking it. Now, once that's off, there's a small hole right back there that is covered up with some uh, clear tape. We're gonna run the wires through there. But in order to get to that, you gotta take these two bolts out that are holding the tail light in. So that way you can pull the tail light out enough to get the wires to slip through the back. In order to get that tension freed to get this out, this little blue clip has to be compressed so it can push through the body of the car. So with that blue clip pushed through, you now have space between the body of the car and the mounting bracket of the tail light to slip your finger through, which is more than enough space to uh, run the wiring through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the wire up through here on the back side of the bumper. It's gonna go in through that little hole right there and then be pulled through and wrapped around the side of this lower bracket. I'm actually gonna feed the wire through this corner over here so that way I don't have any wire hanging on the outside of the frame bracket. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned this up a little bit to get all the dirt and grime off of it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse me getting this cord through and getting this thing finished up and we can work on wiring and reinstallation of all the parts. So once everything's fastened in and butted back up again and nice and sealed, I uh, took some all-purpose sealant, put, rubbed it on my finger, and just basically coated it around the hole in the inside, since that's where I was able to reach. I'll let that dry and harden thoroughly before I actually reinstall everything. So while that's drying, I'm gonna figure out which one of these wires plugs into what port on the back of this plug. Once I have that figured out, I'll bring you back to it. All right, guys, so there's a little bit more background noise than there was when I was out here earlier. Uh, my kids wanted to come outside, so I go ahead and I went ahead and set the hose up for them so they could get wet, beautiful out. It's about 81, which is really nice. So uh, the seller actually has a, wet, a picture uploaded in the images on the listing that shows the black wire being a negative, the white being the signal light, the blue being the brake light, and the red being the DRL. Now, looking at the plug, both plugs are wired the same exact orientation. So from left, to right, you're gonna have the black, white, red, blue. The black wire will be going into the black and white striped wire as the as the ground, and then so on and so forth. These essentially just push in to the top, and using a set of needle nose pliers, you can grab them and push them down until they until you hear a little clicking noise. That click is the sound of the little clasp locking in place on the original connector that's already in the plug. So with that said. I can go ahead and grab that this down here, plug them back in. I'll get some zip ties, zip tie this excess wire to this foam wire here, 
and uh, we'll close this thing up and give it a test. All right, the wiring is secure. Everything looks good. Everything's plugged in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close the trunk, make sure these are functional, and then we'll put the car back together. Everything's back together and I'm good to go. So, as I always say, if you're enjoying the content, be sure to keep following along. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.